Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. And we are going gold and platinum on this review. Leonard Skinner, gold and platinum. All right. First off, I have a hard time believing that all of these songs either went gold or platinum. Gold, maybe platinum, I don't know. All right. Um, if you're one of my regular viewers, you know why I'm covering this Greatest Hits album. If you're not, I'm just kind of doing a group of Greatest Hits albums because there's some bands I will never end up covering if I don't do the Greatest Hits album I have in my collection because I don't have anything else to cover from them. And because of what transpires with the Greatest Hits album, depends on whether or not I ever go out and buy anything else. Um, I've had this particular two disc set it's gotta be 25 years now i'm pretty sure i bought it sometime before or by 1997 if i made it to 1998 without buying this i'm surprised i'm pretty sure i'm not 100 percent, but i'm pretty sure i i got this through either columbia house or bmg i'm pretty sure this is a bmg tag on the back so i got it through them which means it was probably one of my freebie selections at the beginning when i was starting up BMG. Um, anyways, never got into anything else. And believe it or not, I really, over the 25 years I've had these, this double disc album, it's rare I ever listen to it. I've listened to it more in the last week getting ready to do this review than I have in, in years, decades. Seriously. All right, uh, Down South Jukin kicks off this album. It's also like the shortest song on this double disc album at two minutes and 12 seconds. It's the only song that's under three minutes. One of the things that's great about uh, Leonard Skinner is the, the country southern-esque, you know, boot stomping kind of rhythms going on where you can like you know f really feel that boot stomping going on you know just and that's what down south junkin reminds me of uh down south uh sorry down south jukin down south jukin and um the, it's one of those songs right away that reminds me that there is definitely that country element to skinnerd enough that by today's modern rock or modern country standards, Skinner could easily be a country band. And I know there's country bands that have no issues with co uh, covering Skinner. Um, not a song that I'm really all that into. I don't know if it would have been the one I would have started the album off with. That goes into Saturday Night Special. This song got played way too much, I think, throughout, I want to say, the 80s. Because that's when I heard it the most. I mean, I know the song's from the 70s, but I always heard it in the 80s. And it, it's like a lot of the rock radio played it a lot and stuff like that. I, it's not a bad tune. It's a really good tune musically. It's got some really cool hooks and changes and dynamics in it. But not really my thing. Um, Give me three steps. All right, so... This is actually my second take on recording this. And in the first take, I, I brought up something when I was talking about this particular song that I really think is important here. Dimebag Daryl is a huge Southern musician, okay? And if you go looking, you're going to find the rebel flag on his guitars. You find the rebel flag in Skinner's shows. I'm not going to get into the political side of that, but the, where I'm going with that is Pantera had a song called Walk. Give Me Three Steps is, in its own way, the genesis for Walk, at least lyrically. Because, you know, the idea with Give Me Three Steps is Give Me Three Steps, you know, back up, back up, back up, man, back up, give me three steps. And, you know, or, you know, with Pantera, you have to walk. So, you know, I do definitely think that one may honestly have been inspired from the other. 
uh, walk being inspired from this. Not necessarily musically, but definitely with the concept and whatnot and the whole attitude, the, the chest pounding. Um, what's your name? Okay, so... What's your name? Little girl, what's your name? Okay, so that little girl part, especially in today's day and age, definitely sounds creepy-ish. Um, at the time, and being a Southern, that's not really meant in any way to be creepy-ish. It's your basically kind of hitting on song, you know? No different than AC do DC doing Can I Sit Next to You, Girl? You know? Um, you got that right? Okay, so you got that right. It's actually a good just rocking kind of song. If this were a regular album as opposed to a greatest hits, you got that right is honestly the perfect track in the perfect spot for a good, good album cut rocker, you know, just to, you know, you'll have people that are going to be fans of that one and, and, you know, really get up and get moving. And then you're going to have other people that don't really kind of get into it, don't kind of understand it or don't groove on it. And those people, they just got no rhythm, no soul, man. <laughs> you know, but I don't know if I, if it's a greatest hits or a golden, a platinum or a best of, but it's on here. It's really good. You know, like it fills it in the right spot. If I'm saying it's a good album cut on a greatest hits. I mean, that means it's got to be a decent track, right? Um, next track, Give Me Back My Bullets. Americans, especially Southern Americans and their guns. I, I, I grew up in a house. My stepdad, uh, one of my stepdads was, a, was a hunter and, you know, he hunted moose and we had moose meat throughout the year. Cause you know, every year they went out, they usually caught one. I grew up with antlers in my house, a set of moose antlers in my house from the one that my stepdad had shot and killed the one year. I had guns in the house. Gun safety was a, a proper thing, but all we had in the house were hunting rifles. And I'm fine with, you know, hunting animal because wild game is just really tasty. But... The, always the argument of a gun for self-defense has always kind of left me dry. And songs like Give Me Back My Bullets just don't appeal to me for that reason. You know, just kind of, eh, whatever. Uh, then you get to home, or you get to Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. You know it. Come on, you've heard it. It's like every movie that has ever taken place in the South. Where the skies are so blue. Yeah. Come on, tell me some more. All right. It is a hilariously fun song. Great tune. Um, I like the fact that, you know, there's some beef in between Neil Young and Leonard Skinner. Because the line in here of Southern Man Don't Need You Around Anyhow is in retort to Leonard's or Neil Young's Southern Man kind of riffing on like Leonard Skinner. Um, but, you know, Sweet Home Alabama is a good tune, man. Then we're on to the most legendary of all of Leonard Skinner's songs Freebird. This is not the studio version. This is the live version. This is the version that actually has three different guitarists playing it, whereas the studio version was one guitarist playing three different solos in three different ways. The 14 minute and 10 second long version, aside from it takes a while to start off at the beginning. I, I, I get it. The intro, it's nice, but... Oh, man, it takes a little long to get into the song. Um, I love Freebird. Uh, in all honesty, my favorite memories of Freebird are me and my buddy Drew battling it out on Guitar Hero for top score. I eventually won that, and nobody was ever taking that top score away from me. 
And to the point we battled with it so much that one of our other roommates at the time cannot listen to Freebird to this day because if it comes on the radio, he just wants to grab the radio and throw it across the room. Yeah, we played we 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 battled that song that much. That much. like it was it was nothing to hear that song six times in a night as we battled it out on Guitar Hero. Um Freebird is a great song and the whole time this has been on my MP3 player, this is honestly Freebird I've listened to like every day, probably twice. Does it just get that great start in the day kind of vibe or the great ending the day vibe? It works both. I like it that way. Then we go on to Disc 2. And the first track on Disc 2 is That Smell. I really dig that smell. And this is one of those songs that I always kind of forget is Skinnered. And I always forget I enjoy it until I hear it. I go, that is a damn good tune. Damn good tune. Good lyrics, everything to it, man. And if you're one of my regular viewers, you know I'm not a big lyrics guy. And I really dig the lyrics on this one, too, man. And that chorus, that, ooh, that smell. Can't you smell that smell? Ooh, that smell. The smell of death is around you. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's good, catchy. And, and it really throws you off when you're really listening to it, too. After that, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, this is an album I haven't really listened to a lot. Just because, like, when I get to, when I listen to the first disc, it's basically the last two songs. I skip most of the tracks on the on the first disc just because I don't want to be getting up and skipping or getting up and skipping. You know, now that you got MP3 players, I just load up certain songs instead, right? But in the old day of my single disc CD player, you know, having to get up and put on the disc and then, you know, only listening to two tracks and putting it back in, it didn't get a lot of play, you know. And some of the other songs, I, I put them on, but they just, they weren't hitting the spot for me at the time. That goes back to the Pantera, and uh, that that would be, you know, Pantera, Metallica, all Rob Zombie, all of those bands would have been more what I was listening to at that time. Well, I guess, I guess not so much Rob Zombie, Megadeth, more Megadeth at that time. Anyways, not the point. Uh, because of that, I didn't, and I very rarely listened to the second disc, very rarely. And because of that, I didn't catch really on the hunt until listening to it this time through, getting ready for these reviews, to which I went, why didn't I ever really notice this song before? Because it's a good song, but it's just one of those ones I've never really kind of sunk into. And now I just really kind of dig it. Uh, I Ain't the One, meh. Whiskey Rock and Roller, meh. Now, of all of Skinner's songs, Freebird is Freebird. <laughs> Let's be clear. Freebird is Freebird. But, of all of Skinner's songs, Simple Man has got to be my favorite. Out of all of them, it's just... Lately, when I've been going to work, especially, like, there's been a couple mornings, it's been beautiful, you know? Like, I, I walk westbound, got the sun rising up in the east behind me because of the time of the morning I'm leaving at. So you get that beautiful orange glow coming off the clouds that are dissipating off in the west. And it's, it's just a beautiful start to the day. And that Simple Man is just a nice, beautiful start to the day. After Simple Man, uh, we move on to I Know a Little, which I know a little. I don't listen to a lot. <laughs> Tuesday's Gone, which I absolutely, honestly detest the fucking song. Of all of Skinner's songs that Metallica could have covered when they did Garage Ring, the fact that Tuesday's Gone got put on there just breaks my heart. Because I'm just sick of the song. Uh, for some reason, there... Okay, so in the early 90s, there was a movie called Days and Confused. I believe I've covered the soundtrack for it. I believe I've had this rant on that. That soundtrack blew this song up huge like everybody all of a sudden knew this song loved this song wanted to hear it including i remember there was this one girl 
in high school and someone was talking to her about it and she goes, nah, I don't listen to that wanker crap, man. And the only song I can stand is Tuesday's Gone, blah, 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 blah. Because she was all into hip hop and rap and stuff like that. And that basically kind of sums up Tuesday's Gone. It's the song that the girls kind of like and the guys kind of get into a little. I, I hate the song. I, I just... If you got a choice between the slow songs from Skinner and, and you're going between Tuesday's Gone or Simple Man, why why you would pick? The only reason I can think of you would pick Tuesday's Gone is because you, you haven't discovered Simple Man yet. And then the album finishes with Coming Home, which isn't a bad tune. Yeah, it's all right. So, me personally... I would make a single disc. I wouldn't have done this double disc crap. I know why they did the double disc crap. A good part of that is the length of their songs. You know, a good chunk of them clocking in at five minutes or more. And most of the ones I listen to on here and really enjoy are the longer ones. If I were to have put this album together, first off, I would have started it off with Sweet Home Alabama. Get it done and over with right at the beginning right at the start that's it i also would have ended it with freebird because that that's the way to end it now depending on how that that's already 19 minutes almost right there so depending on if we're looking at doing a vinyl or if we're looking at doing a cd depends on how much further i would go with that but if you go with that being 19 minutes right there and then i gotta fill in the middle I'm going to fill it in with You Got That Right, which is uh, 3 minutes 45 seconds. So we're now up to, we're going to say, I'm going to round a little bit here. We're going to say about 22 and a half. All right. And then after that, we've got The Smell, which is 5, and, uh, five minutes 47 seconds. And we're now going to, uh, so... 22 and a half, you're now at 27, 28-ish. I'm going to even go play it safe, say 29 minutes. On the Hunt, another 5 and five minutes, 25 seconds. So, as you can see, we're now up into the, you know, half hour plus marker. Simple Man, you know, we're almost at 40, you know, it's 5 minutes and 47 seconds. So, we're almost at 40 minutes right there. And then it would be wrong to leave Tuesdays Gone out. I I mean, like I said, it is really honestly one of their biggest hits, even though I don't like it. But that would be it, you know. So, and what I would do is I would probably put Tuesdays Gone kind of in the middle of those somewhere. You know, so, yeah, I got the list right here. You can see the list I'm doing. But that's it. That That's... That's how I would do a greatest hits for Skinner because that's all I would listen to. And I wouldn't listen to Tuesday's Gone, which is why it's at the end because I know to get up and turn it off right before I get to the end, right? So, or I mean, not Tuesday, uh, Tuesday's Gone, sorry. I'd throw it somewhere in the middle so I have to listen to it or I got to get up and skip it somewhere. But I, you know, Freebird at the end for those that don't want to do the 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Anyways. Those are my thoughts. Those are my views. Those those are my opinions. Let me know what you think. Your thoughts, your views, opinions. Let me know if there is a Skinner album I should go check out that I just haven't found a need to really go out there and check out because, you know, nothing really pops enough to go, oh, I gotta have that one. Um, like button. Subscribe button. Little bell for notifications. There's a link to Patreon. Peace. Love. Take care.